Good morning, Rosebank Union Church. Um, we're so excited to welcome author Norma Young into the studio this morning as we celebrate extraordinary women in our congregation. Norma has just published a new book, We Need More Tables, Navigating Privilege in the Face of Poverty. And Norma, in the book, you explore the balance between alleviating poverty while maintaining a level of privilege that one may have been born with. And you share some ideas around how those with privilege can play a role in social justice. So why don't you start off by just sharing with us what inspired you to write the book? I was led by frustration more than inspiration in writing this book. I'm a journalist by trade and found that I was in the cycle of guilt and then action, guilt and action. And I wanted to get out of feeling guilty for the privilege, the network, the resources that I have, but also then to take action that was a little bit more impactful than giving a couple of rands to a beggar at a traffic light or donating to worthy causes sporadically. And so I decided to write down what I was learning and exploring and figuring out both for myself, but also for any other people who are interested in trying to figure out how do we enjoy the privileges and the luxuries and the joys of our lives, but at the same time be cognizant that so many people are in need. And so the book is a record of my learnings as well as drawing from insights and examples and studies from experts around the continent. Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, just looking at the title, We Need More Tables, can you share a little bit more about that with us? The title stems from the idea that in business terminology, we often speak about taking a seat at the table. When it comes to our social gatherings, we invite people to come to our tables. And the premise of the book is that so many people don't have tables to sit at, both in the literal sense as well as in the metaphorical sense. And my proposal is that we need more tables that the privileged can either build or make or give away so that uh, more people can have more tables. And as we have more people sitting at tables, they can make decisions that will improve their lives. They can enjoy meals at tables and in turn invite other people to then sit at their tables. And so the cycle of giving can continue. It's so interesting. Um, Norma, in the book, you speak about privilege, which is a term that we hear a lot about in South Africa. And uh, in exploring this, um, how is this idea or concept of privilege relevant to our Christian journey? I think it's paramount. I think it's the story of the gospel. It's the arc and the narrative of Jesus's life. He indisputably was privileged, though not necessarily wealthy. And looking at Jesus' example, I see that he thought justly, figured out who was marginalized and not having their needs met by the community and the society. He lived simply and he gave generously, even though he had network and accesses and resources and connections to some really big, important people and could have uh, kept those to advance his own agendas, but he didn't. He, yeah, invited more people to various tables and built tables and navigated his privilege in a way that sets a wonderful example for us to follow. Thank you. And uh, just lastly, as we wrap up, the past few months have been a real economic challenge for so many. And recognizing that, what do you think is one action that cash-strapped regular people can take as part of a poverty alleviation efforts? I think it would be to pay a living wage. I, I've realized that sometimes I misunderstand and misapply the power of 500 rand. When it comes to myself, I can easily spend 500 rand on a restaurant meal. But when it's given to someone else, I expect that 500 rand to have value beyond its actual material value. I expect sometimes that 500 rand can get people out of poverty, that uh, it will make a marked difference, and the reality is it doesn't. 
And so I think one thing that we can all do is either make sure that people in our employ are earning a living wage and an increase of 500 rand is not going to achieve that. Or when we aren't directly employing people to be able to advocate for people in our offices and in our workspaces so that they can be able to earn a living wage and in so doing start making moves out of poverty. Thank you so much, Norma. Um, I know that there's a lot more in the book and we could sit here for a while and chat about it. But um, Norma's book is available at Exclusive Books. It's available on Kindle or if you want a signed copy, um, you can get it on her website, normayoung.com. 